Greetings, and welcome to episode 9. Today's episode is titled, The Keys to Heaven. And I'm also going to teach you who has those keys. It might even be you. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, the keys to heaven. What are they and who's got them? Well, what they are, what I've found that they are, is just simple techniques for living your life. And everybody's got them. <sighs> Excuse me. If anybody tells you that they know how to get them, but they don't have them and you don't have them, they're trying to sell you something. Don't buy it. You were born with the keys. We, we all were. Certain techniques for living is the only thing you need. I don't care what kind of lifestyle you live. You could be a drug lord, a gangbanger. You could even be a mass murderer. No one on this planet decides if you're going to go to heaven. Not even you. If you're going, you're going. If you're not, let's see if we can't work on it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get those keys? One technique I found, and you might want to check out my my one of my first few videos. I think it's episode two. Is self honesty. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with the world around you, and be mindful of the ripples you make in in your pond. You know, you you plunk a little stone, and it sends out ripples. Well, there's other people that are plunking stones into that pond, and you have to be mindful of how your ripples interact with theirs. You can't just go chuck a great big rock and just mess up everybody else's ripples. But what you can do is maybe let everybody know, hey, I'm going to chuck this big one in there. Or chuck the big one, and then go around and apologize to the people you've affected. Now this works with, with lower level things like say you got into a car accident or you accidentally ran someone off the road, which I guess is still a car accident, but you get you get my meaning. Smaller stuff. If you're a mass murderer and <laughs> you run around killing people, uh, it's probably going to take a little bit more than an apology. And this isn't to ease their suffering. This is to ease your suffering. Because like I said, none of us gets to decide or take away your keys to get into heaven. It's impossible. Even if it were possible, I still don't think it would be possible. Honestly, <laughs> no other way to say it. Uh, look at history and think of the most evil people you can think of. Hitler, Stalin, <laughs> our last few presidents. <laughs> and uh, it doesn't matter what you think of them. You don't get to decide what happens to them upon their death. All your wishing, all of this, all that, your curses, don't matter. You don't decide if that person's going to heaven or not. And you can think, if you, how can you sleep at night? Yeah, how does that person sleep at night? I would like to know how that person sleeps at night. And, and it burns in you, doesn't it? It just burns. Because the one thing Christianity did for, for humans is instill in them the need to, to not worry about what happens to this person because he's going to go to hell for all the bad things he did to you and whoever. So you didn't even have, you could forgive him because you knew he was getting his punishment. And then you wake up and you move down the road a little bit and you realize that there's a good possibility that nothing will happen to that person. And what kind of shitty human being would you be if you went and made sure that something bad happened to that person? Because I'm of the mind to think that hell is supposed to be worse than any place found on this earth. And there are some pretty terrible places on this earth. And the fact that you could wish someone to one of those places kind of makes it so you deserve to be down there with them. Yes? 
I think that's why forgiveness is such a such an important idea because like I said nobody gets to decide who's going to heaven or who's going to hell no one but the person holding the key it's like the two wolves the the old Native American tale about the two wolves that inside each one of us there are two wolves fighting one good made of light one evil made of darkness and they fight on a daily basis and when the young Indian asks the old Indian which wolf wins the old Indian replied the one you feed and I think that's how it works with your keys to heaven the one you feed is the one that will work when the time comes if you fill your life with negativity that's the key that's going to work if you fill your life with love and light and all the things that go with that that is the key that will work now I'm not saying everybody turn their face to the flowers and the love and the joy and the candy and unicorns and no live your life but mean be mindful of your interactions with the world around you the people in your life if you can avoid being an asshole avoid being an asshole it's that simple it's just that simple I, and I'm not gonna lie I know sometimes it's it's fun to be an asshole but I'm not, I'm pretty sure that there's not one of us that's gonna go sit a few minutes in hell for one moment of being an asshole and if you would added up every moment of being an asshole it still wouldn't amount to the entirety of your life or make you deserving of hell do I believe heaven and hell are very real yes I believe they're very real but I also believe you can access those places right here while you're alive on this earth and in this body well not in this body while I'm in this body well here in your body I think there are monsters I think those are real I think they disguise themselves as humans and that's why some people you can't fathom how could they have possibly done that because life has its way of teaching and showing and I think that's one of the ways I think we don't know enough about this place or even ourselves to really grasp what all goes on here I mean there's theories that say that there's more going on in this room than what my eyes and ears can detect and I would have to agree out of the corner of your eye you see someone walk across the room maybe they weren't in your dimension maybe they're just 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 a shift just a little shift over and you just out of the corner of your eye just happen to pick that information up they don't see you or maybe they saw you out of the corner of their eye and they're thinking wow this place is haunted because <laughs> that's the first thing you thought oh, I just saw a ghost <laughs> maybe you didn't maybe you saw just for a split second you saw what else was in the room with you but just like that I believe heaven and hell go wherever you go you can't run from it because it's in here you can't run from heaven because it's in here if you don't feel worthy of heaven but you there's a good possibility you'll end up going anyway because if you don't feel worthy and you end up in heaven there's a very good possibility you're just being a whiny tit and there's absolutely nothing wrong with you you're overreacting to some situation or another that was probably out of your control probably something along the lines of survivor's guilt and I know that like, there's, there's a lot more to that than just being a whiny tit but you get the idea you deserve it you have survivor's guilt or some kind of guilt that's associated with not having something bad happen to you that happened to someone that you either love know or care about I say go and enjoy it because no matter what nothing lasts forever not even hell so say you know for a fact that this person you know is going to hell it wouldn't matter 
because the way life works, all points in time exist simultaneously, just like all points in space exist simultaneously. There's a reason for that, but we're not going to get into that. We're just going to get into the time, all points in time existing simultaneously. That's why time travel is theorized and they're talking about how it's possible. Not the point. The point is, once you die, such observations will be, what's the word I'm looking for? Obsolete? Because you won't need anything to count down when you need to get up, because you won't need to sleep. You don't need anything to count down when you need to go to work, because you don't need money. You see what I'm getting at? So who's to say that by the time you pass and cross over, even if you died within five minutes of this person you know is going to hell, you do not know that in that five minutes they haven't sat their entire duration in hell and moved on. You don't know. All you know is you've crossed over and you see your friend there. Oh, I thought they were going to hell. Well, if you've got a week to sit and talk about it, he saw some crazy shit when he first crossed over. And to him it was a thousand years, but for you it was five minutes, and then you died right after he did. <laughs> <clears throat> but he, he was carrying that. For, for how long? Who knows? But he was carrying that with him, and that's the key that got used when he died. You didn't see that. You did not go to that place when you died. You went straight to the goodness. That's because that's what key you had empowered and that's the key you used when you died. It's that simple. What you fill your life with, those are the keys. Why not make an effort to fill your life with something positive? Because heaven will manifest around you. Hell will manifest around you. You ever noticed how extremely negative people have nothing but drama and problems and oh my God, and they complain and bemoan their circumstances and they are the cause of it all. You, know, you ever notice that? And then you've got those other friends that are just so disgustingly positive. And yes, I say positive energy, but holy crap, they, they, angels, you can see them all around these people. And <laughs> I love me some positive energy and some light, but could you tone it down just a couple of notches? That person's probably going to heaven. And what you're experiencing isn't a, a distaste for that person's positive personality. It's, it's, it's a fair amount of jealousy. Because they have it that good. They have it that good. And that doesn't mean their life is good. That means they have their connection to sources that good. That they brought heaven and kept it with them from birth. From birth to now, they kept that connection that clean. That heaven is right there with them everywhere they go. I'm not going to lie. Some days I wake up and, and all I can say is, well, at least it's not hell. <laughs> and some days I wake up and I'm the king of the world. And some days I wake up and I know I'm paying my dues. And I welcome that because I want that key burnt the fuck out by the time I die. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want that key active when I die at all. That's why, the, that's why the Ten Commandments. That's why the Seven Deadly Sins. These things empower the negative key. Either in yourself or in somebody else. Because if you steal from me, you may not feel bad about it, so you won't get any negativity. But I'll feel bad about it, and I'll generate negativity. And whether I lay my hands on you or not, I've still been put in a negative space. That feeds my negative key. How fair is that, that you get to send me to hell because you wanted to take something that didn't belong to you? That's why the rules were put in place. That's not to say you get good points because you didn't steal, because you were going to steal. Your intention was to steal. Maybe something happened, I gave you a look, and you were like, hey, he's going to beat my ass, or whatever. But you were going to. Your, the intention was still there. Now the, all that means is you're not going to steal from me. You're just going to take it down the road a little bit and steal from somebody else. Doesn't make it a clean deal. At all. But I can tell you, that if you decide that you're going to stop stealing in that moment, that will completely change your karma. 
that will make it so so you're not feeding that key and these keys it's almost as though these keys are alive that's uh, something just came to me like like the psyche your psyche your negative psyche and your positive psyche well feed the positive psyche that's where you end up going I prefer balance boom because like I said I'm not afraid of the shadows I'm not afraid of the light either uh, even Jesus said seek the middle path because people get annoyed at those overly cheery gotta have angels all around you people and I love it in small doses I love it but I'm not gonna lie it makes me a little jealous to see someone with that good a connection it's like what happened in my life that was so wrong that I didn't get that connection did I decide not to have that connection or is, was it my environment that refused to let me have that connection what was it all I know is that wow that's a lot of positive energy <laughs> and yeah I, I'm not gonna lie it makes me kinda jealous but then on the same token it makes me kinda jealous that people that can walk in the shadows and stay in the shadows and they're good with the shadows I can go in the shadows for short periods of time I can stay months but I can't stay years these people will wake up every morning and they'll wake up in the shadows and that's where they'll be I'm envious of that too it's still a connection to source the shadow side of source but it's still a connection to source I've known almost my whole life that I'm not supposed to pick a side the middle path balance you can like I said before you cannot have one without the other because when you do you get your two extremes but then that's just I guess contrast stands in contrast you wouldn't know one from the other unless there was one or the other and that's something for some reason we have to relearn and I say relearn because people people nowadays say oh, we're evolving and I think we are re evolving from a state where we had devolved to and now we're re-evolving now the state that we devolved from had to be vastly superior to what we have now because we're relearning technologies of the mind the heart certain plants that have been on this planet for thousands for hundreds of thousands of years and we're just now learning about them or re learning about them why why did we forget they existed why did the people that know they existed not tell us why didn't they make I would have made it my mission to go around and tell people hey you want to reconnect with source take some of this take some of this try some of this try this meditation I would have made it my life's work well I guess I'm kinda of doing that now but that's not the point the point is when we come into this earth and I don't know you say if you've never had kids you might not be able to, to to speak on this or maybe you've seen it because I saw it before I ever had kids babies know something that's why they're always grinning at you they just know something they're born with that connection to source either the negative source or the positive source doesn't matter it's all the same source but they've born with that connection and they lose the connection because some people would rather be human would rather learn how to work this flesh oh excuse me and interact with other human beings than to keep that connection with source and you're taught that oh you can't leave that open people might look in and see all your embarrassments that and misery loves company because once you close off from source you lose all of your energy you lose all of that power all of that drive to become more and then all you want to do is win the Nobel Prize well isn't that ambition that's that's worldly ambition and none of this stuff comes with you if you're not advancing the sciences in some way shape or form if you're not a musician if what you do for a living doesn't move your soul you're just going to work it's just work only the things that advance the entirety of the race music helps advance the race 
mathematics, science. These things help advance the race. Anything other than that is just work. Working to pay bills. Outward expression. Why is that so important over the connection to source? Why are we teaching our children, oh, you gotta cut off from source and, and, and get in with us. We need to we need you complicit in this broken society so we can sit around and complain about it together. What? Really? Wait a minute. I missed something. You're telling me cut off from all eternity. And now I gotta have these keys. <laughs> When I had not only a map to where I was going, but goddamn GPS. And now, now I get this half, half unreadable map and advice from you motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a good trade. No, it doesn't. I want my connection to source back. I spent the first... And I still try to do it. I spent the first, I want to say, six, seven, eight years of my daughter's lives nurturing their connection to source. Never telling them that, oh, it's just your imagination. Never telling them that, oh, your physical senses are more important. I've spent my life, I've spent their lives trying to get them to not run from themselves in here or in here so when it comes to it they don't lose their connection to source I hope it's working I really do because reestablishing your connection to source is a wonderful momentous moment and all this and that but it's also kind of depressing when you that feeling settles in how long you've been without it just drifting around with a half busted map when you could have had GPS GPS turn here I mean it doesn't get oh I'm lost connect the source it, just connect the source breathe in your question wait a few minutes the answer comes to you they'll upload the, the information automatically into your GPS and away you go that simple connect the source and then you won't ever have to worry about who's got your keys to heaven you you just stuck your foot in the door permanent <laughs> you're going to heaven or the other way you're going to the shadow place you got your foot in the door you're going where you need to be I'm not gonna tell you that you need to stand in the light because if you if your place is in the shadows my friend be in the shadows because you will do no good to anyone not being where you need to be, where you feel you need to be. Now, you may have been born in the shadows, but if that's not where you feel you need to be, maybe you need to go change, make a change in your life. You know, go see the light side for a minute. What I found after walking the shadow and the light was that both are valid. It's all a matter of point of view and opinion. Both have things to teach. One is more like a boot camp or a crash course. The other one says, sit, we have all of eternity. You don't have to learn it now. Point of fact, you get so used to the crash course. Do it now. Learn it. You got to learn it. You got to learn it. So when you get to the light side and they're like, oh, relax. We don't do that here. You're like, huh? Is this for real? <laughs> kind of miss those crash courses because you, you you learn it. You're on a completely different level, a different, completely different learning curve. It's it's accelerated like to the nth degree. Learn it now. Learn it now, or be trampled under. This one says, "You won't be trampled under. You'll just stay back here where it's nice and soft and comfortable, where you probably don't want to leave anyway until you learn it." Well, that's not much incentive. The incentive there is your own passion for learning. Your own lust for life will get you through that. But that passion for learning, I had to learn that in the shadows. 
because you just you have to need it like you need a breath like you need to breathe you need to want to learn these things you need to want to know well how do I destroy this shadow key if I want to go into the light or how do I destroy this light key if I want to stay in the shadows you you need to want that knowledge like you want to draw breath how do I connect to source how do I connect to my source your source being how you identify yourself with source with the universe around you with this house with this couch with that chair that's your source there's only one source but your direct line to it how do you get this information you want it like you want your next breath of air and you tell it you project it you put your intention in it and you focus on that to source I need to know how to reestablish my connection and I need it like I need another breath of air or breathing gas I don't know what planet you're from but that's how badly you need it that's how badly you need to want it to get it okay that works with a lot of things but I'm not teaching parlor tricks right now I might never teach parlor tricks because they are unimportant to the overall journey and most parlor tricks pop up as like fun things to do on the side while you're on your journey so yeah the keys to heaven you've got them already I've got mine already there's not one was it seven billion people on the planet there's 14 billion keys because each human being has two I'm not counting the insects and the animals and all the everything else everything else I think they are living extensions of source more so than what we are we have this body and we get a little bit of spark and yes all of this is source but the part of us that we identify as conscious I think that animals get a bigger share of that I, I don't ask me why it's just a feeling I get that they don't get it the way we do animals don't have souls it's like they are the, the living embodiment of a soul they are souls it's not that they have souls it's and we say oh you you are a soul you have a body I think their body is part of that that's my opinion like their energy coalesce and boom animal whereas we come and inhabit this fleshy vessel that's my opinion so they say animals don't have souls I'm sorry you ever walk up to a horse and put your hand right there in their forehead to an empath oh my god it's how do how do I describe it it's like taking a giant tuning put a put a metal helmet on take a giant tuning fork and put it smack it on the ground and put it to the helmet that's what it feels like to put your hand on, the, on a horse's forehead that's what it feels like to me anyway and just that's that's how I knew they had souls how I discovered that they are souls completely that's just through observation so they don't get keys they are an extension of where they're from if you see animals being evil you know where they're from you see animals being good you know where they're from but see humans don't work like that we've got other filters to worry about and a person the born of the light and has lived in the light can end up being a shadow worker just because the way he gets treated and the way his filters interact with the rest of the world the his uh, what do you genetically predisposed what have you but the system isn't set up so that everyone gets an equal shot and I'll never believe it is just because yes we could argue genetics and we could argue uh, the broken filtering to where mistreatment leads to mistrust leads to having a skewed vision of the world but these things can be overcome but if you don't know that they can be overcome if you won't let the information in or don't know how to ask for the information that's just one lost
And I don't say, oh, he lost him to the dark. I'm that's he's lost. If he's supposed to be in the light and he's walking in the dark, he's lost. Period. Likewise, if he's supposed to be in the shadows and he's walking in the light for whatever reason, this person walking in it's like this person walking in the light, like when I was a Satanist, I knew I wasn't a Satanist. I wasn't evil, but I walked that path anyway. This guy's doing the same thing. This guy's doing the same thing, but he's over in the light. But if he does it in the light, we're all like, oh, we got another one. You lost one, period. You lost one, plain and simple. You're supposed to be where you're at. When you cross over, it's supposed to be a conscious decision for the purpose of learning. If this person is only there because they're confused, you've lost something, something fundamental. And that person needs help. That's one of those gray areas. That everything is not just black and white. I've seen angels hanging out with demons. I've seen bands, death metal bands, that every member of the band is a demon, but one of them's an angel, and you're like, well, that's kind of odd. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? But he's probably there by conscious choice. That's not someone, someone doesn't go that far down the path and become a musician, a famous musician, and not know that, yeah, I may have these feathery wings, but I know who my friends are, you know? Which just goes to show you that the light and dark dispositions are just as feeble at the excuse of hatred as white and black flesh. And all of these things play into which key? All of them. And yes, I am a firm believer that there's really only one key. Because there's really only one place. And experiencing one side or the other is a choice. It might not be a choice. It might simply be that we're... Here's life. That's not the entirety of it. I'm just giving it that much. See? Just so you can fit it in the camera. That much. That's life. We're here. Okay? Way down here at the bottom. That's, that might be the only thing we're able to see is polarity at this point. So we see the white and we see the dark. I see one thing. I, it takes effort for me to see one side or the other. So maybe here is where we need to be. One. Not two. One. And then once you get inside, you experience your shadows. And you have a blast doing it. And once you get inside, you, in spirit, you experience your love and light. And you have a blast doing it. But don't ever let anybody sell you keys you already own. That'd be like me trying to sell you your house, your car, or your kids. Hey, you want some kids? Those are my kids. No, 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 no. They were standing over here. They're my kids. Would you like to buy them? <laughs> They're your keys. Take control of them. You're going to where you want to go, where you need to go. And I've told you how to ask for directions. You ask with the intensity that you want it like you want another breath of air. Alright, I'm getting on to the 30 minute mark and we're going to wrap it up. Oh, I hope you guys like this one. This one caused me to feel a whole bunch in the heart chakra. <laughs> if you liked the video or you learned anything, click the like button please. Uh, favorite it if you want. Uh, subscribe if you would like more information uh, because I love making these videos so this is to me this is awesome but uh, until next time <laughs>